This is a complete authentic model of the original steam locomotive, the one class, and the types of carriages which were used on the original Sydney to Parramatta Railway in 1855. So we began with four of these engines and they are they are basically a what we call an 042. No wheels here. Four driving wheels. With two two wheels coupled up with a coupling rod. We then have a secondary wheel here, pilot truck, pilot wheel as it were, just taking a pony wheel as it were, sorry, just taking the load. Uh, so here's the firebox. So the water in the tender. I mean the firebox in, in there. Fire, the coal fire goes through fire tubes out the chimney. Water in the boiler forms steam. Gets goes through that trap. Some of it goes down into the cylinders, which you can see. There's two structures there, there and there. And those cylinders drive a motion which turns this wheel and this is known as the coupling rod and it makes the whole engine go. So that's an 042 and this is representative of our original locomotive. Now this is similar to the one class but this is a New South Wales built equivalent uh, built by railway workshops in 1877 in Sydney. Uh, and, and this engine itself was uh, housed, uh, left actually for quite some time in the 1900, in the 1940s and the 50s and the 60s at Enfield Railway Locomotive Depot in Sydney. And again, you can see this is an, an O4-2. Now such locomotives, uh, we're just looking at the size of the driving wheels, it's clearly for passenger. Um, steam because steam engines are of course direct drive. There's no gears, uh, and if you want to go fast, you have big wheels, but you compromise on strength. If you want to have strength, you have small wheels. So this would have been a passenger steam engine of the day, but they would have been rough riders and, and not too uh, good on curves because there's no wheels leading this fixed wheelbase here into a curve. These because of this rod here, the coupling rod, and, and this here, it's very fixed and it comes into a curve and it uh, really um, has trouble moving around. Uh, when, when they started with the engines in New South Wales Railways, the first engine was number one and it became the one class and then they, as I said, there were four of those, and then they got to five, and that might have been a different class, and they got to ten, that would have been a different class. And so they just used numbers. Uh, so you'd have a ten, a seventy-nine, a you know, seventeen. Mm -hmm. So to speed that up, or to, to make that more elegant, they then went to an alphabetical system, and the first engine of this class was number seventeen. So this was actually called the E seventeen class, and it got the letter E. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, when you have something like an 042 and you want to make it stronger and as boilers became longer, the next step was to go from an 042 to an 060. So, O, no leading wheels here, straight into a fixed wheelbase with two, four, six, hence the six driving wheels, 06. And we've lost that trailing wheel that we had on the 042, and effectively we've made it one of the driving wheels. So this is a total traction machine, a total adhesion machine. All the weight of the locomotive is used for driving purposes. These are small driving wheels, so this would have been used for freight. And indeed, this was one of our early successful freight steam engines. And you can see, built in 1864 by Robert Stevenson, uh, and quite a good engine.
Yeah, it ended up down at Coromel Coal and Co in its final days. These things would go forever. They'd still be working today if you wanted to. Well, here we are in the cab of the E17. Uh, the tender would normally be sitting here, but for reasons of being able to get the public in, they've provided this space in front of us here. But here you see the essential parts of what we call the back end of the, uh, of the boiler. And, and uh, this is essentially the throttle, which can be used so, uh, notice this wheel here. This effectively is the equivalent of the gears of a car. This is the reversing lever, or in this case we've got a wheel. Uh, so this is the reverser. And this dictates whether the engine's going full forward, or neutral, or reverse. And also the cutoff of the steam. So when it's wound all the way forward, the steam goes into the cylinder for the entire stroke. When you wind it back a little bit, the steam goes in and then you expand that steam, which is how drivers tend to drive. Also, what we've got here is it's on the right-hand side, which is typical of Britain. So this is what we call a right-hand drive locomotive, whereas all our New South Wales railways, we follow the American practice of driving on the left-hand side. So the driver used this and this, and of course he would have had a brake valve, which is not here. Uh, and then you've got other fittings. This is where the water gauge glass was. Yeah, you've got other fittings here. But that's the handbrake. Um.